know how I gotta have my toast in the morning. I gotta fix this thing. Somebody just came in. Go see who it is. They're coming back here. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jason Works. I'm the president of Easy Works. I was uh, just stopping in to introduce myself. I'm a big fan of your work. Oh yeah? What do you want? Just bought a lake house on the other side of Podunk Lake. So you guys will probably be seeing a lot more of me around here. Yeah, great Pa. Just what we need. Another pest hanging around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not trying to get in the way of anything here. I I'll leave if you guys don't want me around. Yeah. Why don't you take a hike? We're actually going hiking later on Podunk Trail. You guys are free to come along if you'd like. That actually sounds fun, Pa. We gotta go later. We're not going anywhere. You need to get back to work. And you, you need to leave. All right, Tara. Well, if you want me to go, then I guess I'll be on my way. Hey, is that, is that a pachinko machine? Yeah, why? You collect pachinko? Ever since I was 10. I've got a whole fleet of machines over here at my lake house. Really? I don't know anyone else who collects pachinko. Oh yeah, fun stuff. Well, I got a bunch of extra loader trays and balls, so if you ever need anything, let me know and I'll hook it up. Uh, yeah, sure. Hey, Pa, you wanna get a lunch? It's 12 o'clock. Yeah, sure. Order it up. Hey, where are you guys getting lunch from? I'll buy. We're just gonna get uh, some Zaz from Podunk Pizza. No problem. How many of us are eating? Just us three? So what do you think? Four pizzas ought to be enough? Here, put it on my business card. Wow, thanks. You know, Taro, your shop is kind of small. You ever think about expanding? That costs money, Jason. Not all of us are multimillionaires like you. Whoa, 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 I'm just a common man like you, Taro. Except my bank account's got a lot more zeros in it. But I'd love to help out a friend's business because that's what Friends do. They help each other out. Really? You'd be willing to put some money into this old place? I can see it now, Terrell. Big two-floor showroom. The spit shine floors in there. Your own office with your own bathroom. That way you don't have to share with Junior anymore. Heck, we can give Junior his own office with his own bathroom. Wow! That'd be awesome, Jason. Why are you being so nice? Because that's what friends are for, Terrell. Wouldn't you do the same for me? Uh, uh, well, um, uh, yeah, sure. If I was a millionaire too. All right, great. After lunch, I'll call my building guy and have him come by and take some measurements. Pterodactyl here. Today's how-to video is gonna be on this here tough torque transmission. And this tough torque transmission is out of a John Deere LA-130. Now, I already got the trans out because the trans comes out pretty easy. You undo four bolts here. There's two bolts here. And then you got your link for your parking brake or your brake pedal, which has this little spacer on top that I dropped on the ground. That goes on top. And then it's got this clip. So you pull this clip out and you pull that rod out. And then on this side, you have the other lever, which the pedal goes to to make it go forward and reverse. And that rod has this clip on it, which you have to get in there and pry it off. So it's a lot easier if you take the wheels off and all them washers and spacers so you can get in there. And then unbolt the back, unbolt the side, and kind of drop the trans down a little bit. So you can get at, at this, this thing here. This is real simple to get at. You just get underneath and pull that clip and you can pull it out. And then there's this belt keeper here, which this is 15 millimeter wrench. So you have to take this out so you can get the belt off. So that's how the trans comes out of the tractor. It's pretty simple. So I didn't think I had to show you how to remove it. Now the complaint, with this trance from the customer was it had no power and it was slow. So looking at the condition of the trans, it looks like it's leaking. 
So chances are, it's probably just low on oil. But I want to take it apart anyway and inspect inside, and I'm sure you want me to take it apart too. So the first thing I'm going to do is take it outside and give it a good pressure scrubbing so it's nice and clean when we disassemble it. Now we're going to pull the fan off, so you're going to need a pair of snap ring pliers. Now this fan's a little loose. Supposed to be a spring washer under here. And this is what's left of the spring washer. Now we can take this plug off here, and in there is a little magnet, and this is where you drain and fill it. So, in order to change the fluid on one of these things, you gotta pull the transmission out. So you gotta get that up a little bit. This is a magnet. Catches any kind of little metal particles in there. And if you notice, it's low on oil. It should be up to at least here. But we'll go over the oil level in a little bit. So in order to drain this, you gotta pick it up and flip it over. So that's what we're gonna have to do get a container, drain it into it. So I drained most of it out, so now I gotta flip it over. A little bit of oil still gonna come out. So I'm gonna stick this plug back in there. Now I can flip it over. Now, Tough Torque does make a transmission stand, and we're going to get one. As soon as I figure out what we're going to need for this trans, I'm going to order it from Tough Torque, and I'm going to get me a, a transmission stand, too. These are 12 millimeter bolts. That one in there is longer. So these two center ones are longer. Now, there's no gasket. This thing is just glued together. And there's some pry points here where you can pry off of it. See all these little tabs sticking out? Those are little points so you can pry the cover off. And there's some nastiness down in there. And this is your filter. This is your trans filter. And then here's another magnet by the differential here. And it's got a lot of, a lot of metal on it. All right, I'm gonna take this little piece out, set that aside, because we're gonna pull this pump part off. And then this is your brake, see? Here's your brake disc. See how the brakes work? Pretty simple. Just that lever just moves and puts pressure on these two little brake parts here. So 14 millimeter socket. So 
need a stronger wrench. There we go. They got them suckers tight. Carefully. We're going to pull this out. There's springs, springs in there. This is our little pump action. that out of there. Right, I got my turkey baster to help suck out the oil, the extra oil that's in there so you can see what's going on. Now we're going to pull this off, which is basically the same, almost the same as this. And all these little pins and these little pins with springs are gonna come out at you if you're not careful. And we wanna check this, this washer here. And there's another spring down here. This is what we wanna look at. You wanna make sure there's no grooves or anything worn in this. So that looks good. And we want to inspect this. I want to make sure this is nice and smooth. And there's no grooves worn in here either. Particularly in between here. If you get grooves worn to here, you're going to lose pressure. Now very carefully, we're going to pull off our brake disc. And we're going to pull this shaft out. And we're going to pull this whole mechanism out here. And again, we're going to have a washer. That looks good. Our thrust bearing. Another washer. Want to look at that. Now, if you notice, this piece here, that can go in like that. It can also go in like that. If you've got this thing flipped around, now ours was in there like that. If you were putting this together and didn't remember which way it went and you put it in there like that and you put this all back together, it's going to work backwards. Forward's going to be reverse and reverse is going to be forward. So that's why you got to pay attention to that stuff. And we want to look here. Make sure this is okay. Make sure this is smooth. Make sure there's no grooves in there, war in there. And then there's this little pin that was in there. Yeah, a little pin just fell out. See, it fell out again. Be aware of that little pin.
And then again, we're gonna have, got a washer under here. And again, we're gonna have these little pistons with springs. To check these surfaces here. And it all looks good. So, probably just got to replace the seals because it was leaking all the trans fluid out and it was low on fluid and that's why it had no power. And then again, you're going to want to check the differential here too. That all looks good. We've got these little pins here. With springs. Fatter, that spring is fatter on the one end than the other. It wouldn't go back together that way anyway, backwards, if we put it in backwards. Okay. It looks good. Let me order up some seals. Our parts have arrived. And like my hat, it says tough core. <laughs> Stay up. All right, here we go. $200 knife. Let's see what they sent us. They sent us a bag, some drain plugs. You can add drain plugs to one of these tough torque transmissions. I have a video that shows you how to do that. This is the seal kit. And these are the replacement parts for the pump and the motor. And this is the center case. And it comes with a gallon of their Tough Torque oil. Now, you remember I was saying I was just going to replace the seals. So when I talked to the people at Tough Torque and I told them that those magnets had a lot of metal on there, they suggested that I just go ahead and do a whole rebuild on it. Plus, that's what you're gonna to wanna to see anyway. You ain't gonna to wanna to see me just replacing the seals. So another thing they sent me was a uh, transmission stand. I almost said engine stand. Transmission stand, which I mounted to this. Now we got a video on this too, showing my custom transmission stand that I made. You can watch that video. That's a kitty litter pan, blade muffins. They poop in a big tote now, they're so big. Blade weighs like 19 pounds and muffin weighs like 12 pounds. So there's that, here's our trans. So earlier, before we got the parts, remember I was telling you to inspect these parts here? And what you're gonna wanna look for are grooves. You have any grooves in here, in this area, that's when you gotta replace this part. This part's bad. Because the oil is leaking past these grooves and that's where you're gonna lose power. Now these are good. These parts are still good. But they came in the kit so we're gonna replace them anyway. And then we're gonna go over a bunch of stuff in the transmission so you know. Now, this stuff will all come out of here. If I was to flip this over, these would fall out. So we're not gonna flip it over until we install all the new parts, put the cover on, then we'll flip it over and start changing the seals. You don't have to 
disassemble it, say, to get the seals out. You know, like if you needed to change the top seal, you don't have to take this shaft out to pop the seal out. And then here's your differential. And if you did want to pull the axles out, you take this out. And then when you pull on the axle a little bit, there's another clip right here. That's why you got to have one of these magnets on a stick. And then you take this clip out. Now you can slide the axle out. So that's how you remove the axles. Let's put that back in because we're not going to remove the axles. Now this little plate here has got these metal runners underneath here. They're almost like a bearing, like almost a, like a bearing on a connecting rod. So there's a little tab or a little tit underneath here that this locks into. So you need to be aware of that in case for some reason these things fall out. So you gotta get them in there until you feel it lock into that tab. There's one on each side. By me pushing on it, you can feel that it's locked onto that little tab. And then this washer too on the bottom also comes out. Now it's stuck on there due to the oil, kinda like suction, but I'm gonna talk about that too. All right, now we're gonna talk about this a little bit. This thrust bearing and these two washers for this part here. You also have the same here. Same thing going on here for this. You got the washer, you got your thrust bearing and you got another washer. So this is important because it applies to these two. These washers look the same, don't they? They look like they're exactly the same. They're not. The inside diameters are different. This inside diameter is smaller than this one. Hey, I should do it this way. You can see it better. See? So the inside diameters are a little different. So the one with the bigger inside diameter goes in here first. Same with this one. This has got the bigger inside diameter. Then your thrust bearing. Then the one with the smaller inside diameter. The reason for that is they want a little bit more surface area rubbing on these little pistons. So it's something as, as small as that that can mess you up. Plus you can actually see that these have some wear on it from where the pistons were rubbing on there. So that's another telltale sign. So now we're gonna talk about this center case, they call it. We're gonna talk about this a little bit. Now you're probably looking at that and wondering, what are these, Terrell? What are these little things? This is what's called IDS, Internal Dampening System. 
Not all tough torque transmissions have this. This one does. And what an internal dampening system is, is it kind of smooths out the control of the hydrostatic transmission. You know, when you push on the pedal, you got a smooth takeoff and smooth reverse. That's what this does, it dampens that. You know how some transmissions, when you hit the pedal to go forward, it kind of jerks you, and then kind of jerks you back. Well, that's what this is. Internal dampening, that smooths out the motion. These are these little pistons, or valves, because they got a hole in the end of it. And there's springs in there. Now they have another version of this that has these little valves, but there's a ball in there. It's got a steel ball. And I can show you the instructions that came in the kit that'll show the difference. See, this is the ball IDS, where it's got a steel check ball and a spring and the valve. And then you have this one, which is the one we have, which has a spring and a little tiny filter and a valve. And if you notice here, if yours is machined, like ours is, see, it's machined, you have the IDS. If it's not machined, you have the non-IDS, which means it's casted into the center case, it's just not drilled through and, and machined. So let me show you those little filters that are inside here. There's one. Those are little screen filters that are inside here. So if you're taking your trans apart, you might want to take those out, make sure they're clean, and put them back in. But in the kit we have, we've got new ones. So we're going to install the new ones. We don't need these. And remember I was talking about this little pin and this washer? That little pin goes in here. And what that is, that's for your release. You know, this valve on your transmission that you pull so it'll freewheel. This rod is hooked to this. That's why it's got that flat spot on it. So when you pull on the lever, that pushes on this pin, and that's what relieves the pressure so you can freewheel the tractor. That's what makes it move. So that's what that pin is for on the center case. Now you can buy an individual seal kit you go on to their website, they have different kits you can buy. They got axle kits, they got this complete rebuild kit like they sent me, or they have just a filter kit. Now this is an upgrade part here I'm gonna show you. Now not all the parts that are in the kit you're gonna use, like these O-rings in this kit for us, we're not using these O-rings they don't apply to this particular trans. We're not gonna use this because that's a seal for a drain plug. Because some transmissions have drain plugs, this one doesn't. You can add a drain plug and you can go to my video that shows you how to do that. So here's our valves, our new valves. And here's our springs. And then they sent me this part and three magnets. So they recommend that you change the magnet on the differential. Instead of just cleaning it, they said just put a new one in there. Now on your trans, you may just be changing the fluid and adding drain plugs, so you might want to clean it. 
So this is something new for the center case. And they want you to add these magnets to here. So now, there's gonna be a total of four magnets in this transmission when we go to put it together. So this is a little upgrade, and that shows that right there on the instruction sheet. And then in our filter kit, we got a new filter. And these are some of the seals that we're gonna replace. Here's an O-ring, a couple of O-rings, again, that we're not gonna use. A new vent cap. And this is that new plug that was under the uh, fan. Here's another seal. These are the two axle seals. This is the top seal. Another drain plug, seal, and an O-ring. And then here's our two new little filters for our IDS. And then of course, a tube of this RTV for sealing the cover back on. So we're just gonna go ahead and install our little filters and our springs and put them in our new case. This is our new cylinder block for the pump. This is what pumps the oil through the transmission, this hydrostatic trans. So in order to do that, the easiest way is to kind of tilt our transmission like this. Because when you try to install it like this, the little pistons want to come out, then they get cocked and then it's difficult to get it on there because you're fighting the spring down here. So this way is easier if you got the trans cocked a little bit. That's why it's nice to have this, this stand, see? Now we can go ahead and put our center case back on. Now you should always coat everything with a little, little coat of oil. We're going to install this little pin, which is that release pin for when you pull on the lever, but it's gonna to wanna to move on us. So you can use a little bit of grease or Vaseline to help hold it for you. You don't wanna push it all the way in either. Kinda of wanna leave it out a little bit. because we have to install all this other stuff. This is the motor cylinder block, or the motor now. So you're gonna wanna put some oil on there, and you're gonna wanna put some oil on here. And then we had this washer. This washer goes in there. So we have to kind of Put this on, put our block on, oh, almost put it the wrong way, with our pistons this way. And get everything in there, situated. Then we can put this washer on. Now if you notice this washer is kind of smooth on one side and a little bit smoother on the other. So we're going to put that up like that. And again, we'll put some oil on everything because that kind of helps stick it to it. And then we can carefully, making sure your IDSs don't fall out put that together like that. So now we got this whole center case assembly. And then again, you have to pay close attention to how this goes. 
because if you put it in like this, if that's not the way you took it out, it's gonna work the opposite. Remember in the beginning I said, you gotta show which way it goes. And ours was like that. And you're gonna have to push on them springs. This is a little, this is the trickiest part. Cause we gotta get that bearing in there. We don't want our IDS's to fall out. Got to get that center case on those pins. The shaft, this bearing's got to go in here. Just lightly tap that shaft in. All right, there's our block. Everything's in. I'll take these 10 millimeter bolts. And then here's our new magnet carrier. If yours came with one. And just for now, we're just gonna snug them down. Now I'm gonna reach under here, turn the shaft, make sure this is not bound up, it's turning. Put some pressure on this, cause you don't want this to jump out. Okay. Everything's turning like it's supposed to. Now there's torque specs on these bolts. 10 millimeter, between 33 and 47 foot pounds. The 47 is kind of high, I think, since we're tightening these bolts into aluminum. So I'm gonna set my torque wrench at 35 foot pounds. I think that'll be just enough. And then slowly, in increments, tighten them up. I'll tell you, this, this bench is nice. This, this little carrier, little trans holder, just makes working on these transmissions easier. Before trying to work on them on the bench and they're flopping around on you, There we go, there's 30, 35. There's 35. All right. So now we're ready to install this little metal block. And if you notice, it's kinda got a curve to it. And it's only gonna fit in like that. It's not gonna fit in there this way. It's too long. You want to curve the flat part against this and the curved part to the outside. You know, you could stick it in like that. Well, that's wrong. You want it flat up against there. Well, what's that, what's that part called, Terrell? It's called a metal block. Who cares what it's called? That's where it goes. That's all you need to know. Now we can install our parts for the brake. And that has to go in there just like this. This L-shaped block goes in there like that. And then the other one, the other puck, which again, you could see 
how it was wearing on there. That's going to go in there like this. There's our new differential magnet. That fits right in there. Now we need to clean off all this silicone. Well, why didn't you do that before, Carol, when you had it all apart? What difference does it make? Well, that silicone, you might get in there. Yeah, well, I didn't take all these gears out. There's a filter on here. Just be careful. As you're cleaning the silicone off, if you use your head, try to scrape it away from the inside of the transmission. So that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to very carefully clean all that off. You, if you want, you could clean it off before I put all the pistons and stuff back in there. You could get it all prepped. So whatever tool you have to scrape, scrape that, get that old silicone off of there. So basically when I clean these gaskets off, I use one of these little razor blade scraper things. A rag, carb sprayer, brake cleaner, and a little screwdriver you're going to need. Because when you go to do this cover, you got to get the silicone out of these little valleys. So now it's all clean, so we can go ahead, drop our filter in, there's our new filter, and then we're going to go ahead and put that silicone all around here and then into here because they want to isolate the differential from the hydraulic part. And the reason they do that is they just want to keep a certain amount of oil in this area and a certain amount of oil in that area. But when you go to fill it, where the hole is, it lets the oil in on each side. Because somebody brought that up in the drain plug video. Well, if you're isolating those two different sections, Terrell, how does the oil get in there? The oil gets in there because it's got a hole that lets it go to each side. They just want to maintain a certain level in here. They don't want all these gears spinning around, disrupting the oil level on this side. And then these little casting holes are for drain plugs. Now, Tough Torque told me not every manufacturer wants drain plugs in the transmission. So that's left up to the manufacturer. Say it's uh, John Deere. John Deere says, you know, we don't want the drain plugs in there on this particular model. We'll put them on this one, not that one. It's all the preference for that. But if you want to add drain plugs, there's where you drill. Eight millimeter drain plugs. And if you want to see how you do that, go to my drain plug video. But all you do is basically take a drill and drill a hole there, drill a hole there, and tap it eight millimeter, 1.25 tap, and then Go to Tough Torque and buy the, the drain plug kit, which comes with an eight millimeter bolt and that ceiling washer. And don't be contacting me. I can't find a drain plug kit. Call them, get on the phone, pick up the phone and call them. Hey, I want a drain plug kit. Cause I'm not gonna answer. I'm busy. So I'm gonna go ahead and silicone that all up. And then we'll put the cover on. Then we're going to start replacing all the seals after that. Now I wonder if some of you are noticing the t-shirt I'm wearing. Deliverance. One of my favorite movies. You know why it's my favorite movie? Because my kid folk are in it. Remember the scene with Burt Reynolds? They arrive at that place. Burt Reynolds is looking around. And he hears some guy hammering in a shed. And he goes and looks through the window and the guy whacks himself in the hand with the hammer. <laughs> That's funny, I love that part. You know who that guy is? That's my daddy's uncle. 
He's the one that whacked himself in the hand with the hammer. All right, so let me go ahead and silicone this up. So this is where you're gonna wanna put your bead of silicone on the cover. You're gonna wanna put it in here, in here, and round here, and in there. Remember that tire chain video we did? Anywhere in here, round here? You wanna put the silicone? Anywhere in here, round here. Now we can drop the cover back on. Oh, I almost forgot one other thing. Very important before we drop the cover back on. See this shaft here? See how it's got that flat spot? That flat spot's gotta be sticking up. Otherwise you're not gonna get the cover on. So pay attention to that. That's gotta be like that. All right, now we can put the cover in. Otherwise you're gonna be fighting the cover and you're not gonna know why. Why won't this cover go on? Darn it, darn it, stop beating on it with a hammer. Just like my uncle did, or my daddy's uncle. And go ahead and put all your bolts in and snug them down. Make sure they're not cross threaded. And again, here's a torque spec, because those are M8. And that foot pound rating is tightened up a lot more than this one, between 16 and 18. And then just go in a cross pattern and gradually tighten them. All right, got the cover on, it's all torqued. Now we can start replacing the seals. Now they told me at Tough Torque, you don't have to take it all apart to replace the seal. You just gotta pop them out of there. So we're gonna take this E-clip off, or C-clip, whatever you wanna call it, and then just get in there and dig the seal out. I need a heavier screwdriver. Here it is, here's that one. Dig it out. Dig it out. That was probably the one that was leaking. And we'll clean it up. Got the new seal. Put a little grease on it. On the inside. This is the outside of it. Just remember, whenever you do a seal, they all got these little springs in there. Those always face to the inside. Now they also gave me this seal kit, seal tool kit. Which you can buy at their website. But most of y'all, you're not gonna buy these tools if you're just doing it the one time. But what you do with this is this. That's how you put the seal in, see? And it knocks it right into the perfect depth. And then these are for axle seals. This is for their transmissions with the one inch axle. And this seal tool is for this, this axle. Axle rose is what I call it. So again, just get in there with a screwdriver. Try the old seal out. Seal out! And we're gonna clean it up. Now, this is usually sharp, especially if you're putting new axles in. If you're putting new axles in, I put the seals in after I took the axles out. I'd go ahead and pry them out and pop the new seals in and then put the axles in. But since we're doing it this way, we're gonna wanna protect the seal. So I got some tape some thin, 
cellophane tape, packing tape, because it's real thin. Stick that over the shaft. Again, put a little grease on there. Now this seal, axle seal, is a little deceiving because it's like a double lip seal. So you gotta look real careful and then you'll see the spring in there. I don't know if the camera can see that, but the spring is in there. Look for the spring. And you want the spring to face to the inside. And then take the tape off. And then we'll spray a little, little lubricant on the shaft. Put our seal tool, tool on there. This axle's a little. This axle's a little rusty. So I'm gonna have to clean it up to get that tool to slide on there. Now if you don't have one of these seal tools, you can always use the wheel. You, you can put that, that spacer on there and that washer and you can take the wheel hub and kind of slam it on there. And then you'll end up getting it flush. But that's probably about the best you'll be able to do because you don't have the seal tool. And I'll go ahead and pop the other side out. So this is what you can do if you don't have that fancy seal driving tool. Put the washer on and that spacer, especially if your tractor uh, transmission is still mounted on the tractor, you can just take the big back tire and do it. But I just went out in the junkyard and just grabbed the front wheel. And you can drive it on that way. Then, take that washer off, and then you can drive it in a little more, gently. Because you don't want to wreck that new seal. So that's how you could drive that one on. Or, find a washer that's the same diameter as the seal. And then you could drive it on that same way I showed you. That would probably be better. But just in case you don't have one, that's how you can do it. All right, so the axle seals are changed. The top seal is changed. There's a seal under here, which I'm sure is leaking. So we need to get a, a punch and drive that roll pin out. Now these are regular roll pin punches. And the difference between them is it's got a little ball on the end. Cause that little ball fits into the hollow part of the roll pin. And keeps it centered for you while you're driving it out. So for you tool guys that don't know about that, you might want to get yourself a set of Roll pin punches. And we'll clean all that nastiness out of there. I'm sure this was leaking. It looks like it was. That looks like it might be a O-ring. Yeah, that's just an O-ring. So, in case you didn't buy the seal kit, you can just take that old O-ring up to the hardware store and get another one. I'm gonna look in there, it almost, almost looks like there might be 
two O-rings in there. No, just the one. All right, I'm gonna spray that out. And blow that out real good. I don't want nothing to fall inside, so I'll just put that cap on there for a second. And always put a rag over stuff you're gonna blow. So it don't come back, blowing you back in your eyeballs. And this looks like the O-ring that was in the kit. So you don't need no special tool for that. Put that back on. Line it up with our hole. There's your dinner. Now we got a shaft here. We're gonna wanna replace what's under there too. Grab that out. Lift this out. See how that spring went on there? In case that done pops off on you. Again, this just looks like it's an O-ring. So you're gonna have to have a pick tool and then we'll blow that out again. Find the appropriate O-ring in our kit. This goes up. All right, now we got one more right here. This one right here. We're anywhere in here, around here. Anywhere in here, around here? Carol, Carol, are you anywhere in here, around here? Carol, Carol. Look at that, that's nice. I love this bench that I made. Look at that fell right in there. Otherwise, if it would have hit that wood, it would have went flying. I'd have been searching around on the floor like an animal. What do we got in here? What's in here for a seal? Another O-ring? It looks like a regular seal seal. Yeah, a little harder to get out. Gotta get a screwdriver in there. Yep, that's a regular seal seal. <laughs> Gonna put the noise in there. Editor, put that noise in there. <laughs> and here's that seal. So we're gonna wanna put a little, a little oil, which I can get out of the pan. And again, it's got a lip. You want the lip to face in. That's going in. This is the outside where it's flat. And then drop it. No seal tool for this one. Just 
Just use this. Tap it in there. Then I'm gonna take this screwdriver and I'm gonna go right at the very top of the lip and at the bottom. And just very lightly tap it into that pocket. Very lightly. It'll go in. They don't they don't fit in there real tight. There's not any kind of pressure on here. You know, hydraulic pressure that's gonna blow it out. All right. So this is, really isn't too bad to freshen up one of these transmissions, or at least take it apart and inspect it. Maybe change all the seals from the fluid. Get the appropriate kit you need. All right, now let's fill it up. Now in my uh, drain plug video, I show you the level they want and I show you a list of the different fluids for the different transmission models. So I'm going to show that again. And again, this is all on their website, this information, if you want to find it and print it out. So you find the model transmission you got. This is the model. And this is the recommended replacement fluid. And this is what the original fluid is. So if you're changing the fluid and you don't want to buy their stuff, just put back in what they originally had in there. Oh, and it tells you how much. So if you want to measure it out and pour it in so you know you have the exact amount, or they tell you here. So this is that breather vent, and it'll tell you how far from the top, 10 millimeters, 42, 37, If, you, if you're filling it through that breather, or if you're filling it where the little magnet is, about three quarters of an inch to an inch below the top. Just in case you want to know, well, mine's leaking and I want to put some fluid in it. So here's that vent cap, you can fill it through there. But a lot of times these are glued in there. So you might ruin that taking it out. Plus, this would be a good place to refill it. If you did the drain plug thing that I show, you may want to pop this off. And when you get the seal kit, you know, you'll get a new one. And in that way, when you drain your fluid, It'll be easier to fill it through here than it would through here because you're going to have your fan and everything's going to be in the way. So you could drain it and then fill it through there. And then like I said earlier, somebody asked, you know, how does the oil get to the two separate parts? Well, there's a big hole here, which is where the differential is. See, you got my finger in there. And then there's a hole here, which fills the motor pump area. So the oil gets into those two areas. Not a problem. Well, I'm gonna get a funnel because otherwise I'm gonna make a mess. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it up.
So we got her to the right level, three quarters of an inch to an inch. Here's our magnet. And our plug. Now we're gonna test it. So on some of these tough torque transmissions, different models, they have this little adapter. You might have seen these. If you've seen these, you might want to save one because you could use it as a tool. Because it fits on the spline. And it's got a hex. And then I got my drill set up with one of these bits. You can buy these bits that fit in your drill. They come in a set, quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, and a deep well socket. Now you can spin it. You can spin the transmission. And this is our forward and reverse. Now we'll check reverse. I don't think I'm squeezing it hard enough. You really gotta squeeze it. You gotta make sure you're going the right way too. Cause some of these are clockwise transmissions, some are counterclockwise. Got a little air in it. All right, so we know our transmission works. Isn't that a neat little trick you just learned from Carol? So I'd like to thank Derek and everybody over there at Tough Torque for giving us this stand and that dealer tool kit and supplying us with that rebuild kit for no charge. And they gave us a hat and a, a little magnet and even a tape measure. So, that's all there is. Those transmissions are pretty simple once you get into it and you see it. You think, oh, it wasn't that bad. When I took the cover off, it looked like a bunch of metal parts and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of overwhelming when you pop the cover off and you see all that stuff and you're like, oh, wow, it's a lot of stuff in here. Then you start shaking it and everything starts falling out and everywhere. So that's why you gotta be careful and take your time. And you might, if you don't want to buy a stand, you know, build yourself some kind of stand. And, as always, there's your dinner! Woo! Tough car transmission, hydraulic, hydrostatic transmission! Rebuild! And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Ding, 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 ding. Go to our web store and buy some tarot apparel. You ain't going to get this there. I, I bought this myself from another site. And as always, like I said before, there's your dinner. Woo! Tough door! Tough door! See? You can rebuild these transmissions. The dealer told me it was not serviceable. Yeah, because the dealer don't want to work on it. Thanks again for lunch, Jason. But you didn't have to do that. No problem, Terrell. That's what friends are for, right? Hey, since I uh, did all that nice stuff for you, think you could do a small favor for me? Uh, sure, what's that? I'm gonna need you guys to take on the Easy Works product line. Oh, I'm sorry. What all does that mean? Not a whole lot, really. You'll just have to sell and service only EasyWorks products in that nice new showroom we're gonna build you. So what do you say, Tara? You wanna sign on? I don't know, Jason, but maybe we can work out some kind of halfway deal. Sorry, Tara, I'm gonna need you all in. But being friends and all, we're pretty flexible. We can make something work. I'll bring the contract by tomorrow. Some units you guys can check out, but I gotta run, so. I'll catch you guys later. All right, yeah. See you, Jason. All right, take care.
Did I hear Jason ask you to take on Easy Works? And you said you'd think about it? Chill out, Junior. I said I'd think about it. And besides, he's gonna put a second story on this place. But still, we both know that stuff is crap. Oh, it all can't be crap. But we'll see when he brings in those new models tomorrow. Hey guys, how's my new best friends doing? We're doing just fine today, buddy. Check it out. Brought with me the new EasyWorks POO 7000. It's from our Rugged series. Let me come out there and check that thing out. Wow. This thing really does look rugged. What the? It's a prototype, so bear with me. We're still dialing it in. Told you, Pa. So uh, why don't we move on to that contract? Look, Jason, you're a great guy. And I've had a lot of fun hanging out with you this past day or so. But I don't think we're a good fit for easy works and all. So I think I'm going to have to take a pass on your contract. Oh, really? Why is that? There's got to be a good reason you won't sign with us. Look, Jason, your products are... Yeah? Crap. What? Crap? We're number one in the market for sales. Yeah, because the stuff breaks so quick, you got to buy another one. Yeah, well, you guys are missing out on a great partnership here, all right? I thought we were friends. I was going to hook you guys up. That's all right, Jason. You can still put the addition on. You just don't get it, Dactyl. No deal, no addition. Now, you boys have a nice day. I got to go hit the slopes. <sighs> what? See, Pa, what I tell you? Never trust an easy work salesman, even if they claim to be your friend. That's a shame, Junior. You know, he had two obscure loader trays I needed for one of my Pachinko machines. Now I'm gonna have to go to eBay. Here, throw this stuff away. Here. Ah. After lunch, call my little building guy and have him come by and take some veggies. Hey, since I uh, did all that nice stuff for you, think you could do a small favor for me? Oh yeah? What's that? Oh, there's this guy on the other side of town that I don't particularly like. I was wondering maybe if he could have a little accident. Got the new EasyWorks, PB, P-O-O-O-O-O. 